Well, we made a move yesterday, packed up camp, and uh, headed about two or three more miles in, about another thousand feet of elevation. We found this nice little spot to camp here um, on the side of this hill. And um, Brad and Ryan saw a couple bears, pretty nice bears on the way in. Um, so me and Mark are gonna pop up this ridge behind us here and see if we can get eyes on anything. Um, and then the other guys are gonna split off and see if they can find, relocate any of those other bears that they saw on the way in. We got a couple of nice days of weather ahead of us, supposedly, hopefully. Uh, it's supposed to be sunny for a few days, so hopefully the bears will be out and we'll get everything dried out and fill a few more tags before we head out. We got five or six more days of food and then uh, hopefully we'll be heading out with uh, with some bear meat, so. Just gonna keep after it and hope we turn up some bears. seen as jet black bears and Mark spots this freaking giant he's like the color of your hat dude he's, he's like the color of Mark's hat he is white I want that bear on he's did our hard work hopefully Lord willing is about to pay off with this oh, this man, bear's that sick bear is something special he's got black paws he's got a black face he's got kind of a blackish dark butt but his main body is just freaking and you're white. He's a cool bear, man. I just got through saying how we don't see many of them. Oh, I'm getting some good footage of him. That bear's got me excited, honestly. Oh, man. You just don't. I almost want to think we should go right now. Man, sometimes it's just like the lowest of lows. You climb up and we're worn out. You look over and you see a bear, and all of a sudden your adrenaline looks like it's a whole new day. You've got like a whole new jolt of energy. It's like drinking five packs of. Mountain Ops Ignite all at once. <laughs> Especially when you see a unicorn like that. That's that's such a unique color to see that double fit color. You just, I just don't. I've not seen many bears like that that have the black paws and the white back and kind of the black, kind of not black, but um, darker, darker booty. Gotta put my cheaters on. I gotta get a good look at this sucker. That's the kind of bear you see when you hike nine miles back. <laughs> And climb out when he got off of thousands of feet. That's what you find right there. Mark named him Butter Butter Butterball. 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 He looks like creamy butter. Creamy butter. And I bet he's got a lot of bear fat on him. Alright, so we decided. Mark said let's drop. So we're gonna drop. 
Let's see if we can get a shot on this bear. He's gorgeous.
freaking dropped him. The only thing that would have been better if he'd have rolled down to the creek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, Hunter, we put in a lot of days for that one. Great shot, dude. Thanks. 342 yards. It wasn't nothing crazy, but man, this rock in my stomach was getting to me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Now, brother, we got some. We got some work to figure out now. I don't think we could have dialed it any better than that. Um, it was. I mean, we saw him. He didn't move. He let us come down. We could watch him the whole time down, make sure he was there. We got to the trail and then there just happened to be an extension, like a ridge coming off the trail gave us another, probably hundred yards closer than we would have had to shoot. So, I mean, this is your last. The, the route down doesn't look like completely terrible even. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna be here till, till we'll be, we'll be tired puppies tonight. So hopefully, the, Hopefully we'll get nice fat off him. We'll have some bear meat cooked up again tonight. I wish the wild onions were out, but I haven't seen any yet. So. I'm getting ready to text Lampers and tell him that Butterball Blonde is down. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like trying out a raft for the first time ever. And we've got these raging rapids right down below us. So, uh, yeah, we'll get it done. Oh, there it is. Two, four, no, about five. We're about five. Yeah. All right, so me and Mark are loaded up with rafts, kill kits. It's gonna be a long day, but it's gonna be a good day. Well, made it across. I'm pretty wet. And uh, Mark says I got a little panicky. <laughs> upstream, upstream. There you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. Let it go. Upstream, upstream. Looking good. I was freaked out for a second. I'm not going to lie. But hey, made it across. All right, It. Wasn't pretty, but I made it. And we're, uh, I think, uh, 500 feet below the bear. Is that right? 500 feet below the bear. So we're gonna get it done. Before we walk up on this bear, I just want to say thanks to Hunter, man. Virginia Flatlander. I don't think he knew what he was signing up for when he came on this, but he's been with me from the beginning. And I'm just going to be honest, we're kind of embarrassing Lambers a little bit right now. <laughs> you hear that, Lambers? <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Love it. We'll keep doing it as long as I can do it. Thanks, Hunter. Oh, nice bear. He's not huge, huge, but he's not freaking small. It's pretty. Oh, man. Beautiful color. Oh, man, beautiful color. I think it was a lot of work to get over here, and it's going to be a lot of work to get back. Yep. But... One foot from the other. All right, well, let's start, I guess. Grab my stuff. Well, we're about 
three quarters of the way down back to the river we got a raft across and then go back up but uh i think we can make it it's really not as much physically demanding as just mentally stressful it's, this is pretty dangerous honestly it's very steep but, uh, just keep putting, putting one foot in front of the other we'll make it we're almost there So happy to see this trail, you have no idea. A little bit of a walk back, but man, I don't even care at this point. But we did it, we did it. Grinder of a day. All right, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this episode with Mark Livesey and Hunter McWaters. Got to give a shout out to Hunter McWaters who ran the camera and did a lot of this edit, most of the edit. Big shout out to, to, to Hunter for that. And we captured this hunt, got it ready for you. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to break it down a little bit. One of the questions that is a mystery to mankind is how Mark Livesey can survive with that much sweat pouring off of his body. <laughs> So we're going to get into that a little bit. <clears throat> also, the bear itself. Have a little discussion about yeah. uh, color phases, um, the terrain, the rafting. The rafting was atrocious by both of them. So we're going to... little they're bit not of here. experience. They're not there. here to defend themselves. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to uh, impart some... Um, Words of wisdom. Ex yeah, experienced uh, wisdom. Yep. So that everyone out there perhaps uh, attempting to cross a stream this... Uh, or a raging river this this spring won't die so yeah. a few tips there before we get into it we got to remind you that we have a big uh giveaway going on right now yep. the some men can some men can't t-shirt giveaway we've said it over and over again we're gonna plug it one more time yeah if you buy the shirt you're entered to win a peaks teepee a pair of peaks gators trekking poles the duo headlamp yep We've got five hundred dollar gift card to the Go Hunt Gear Shop, a lifetime insider membership, a two hundred fifty dollar gift card to the Mountain Ops. You got a Stealthy Hunter package. You got Initial Dark Ascent Energy. backpack. Yep. It's a big, huge prize package. We're gonna pick that winner. Like I said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yep. right in there. Look for that video to drop on our YouTube channel. But today's the last day. Get in on that. And we also have a big giveaway going on with Initial Ascent mm -hmm. backpacks. It also closes at midnight tonight. Yep. If you use the code Gritty over at Initial Ascent and you buy yourself something it doesn't matter what uh every 25 dollars mm. you spend gets you entered to win and we're going to do the same thing we're going to pick a winner uh monday or tuesday and announce that so look for that video on our youtube channel also if and if you're on the fence on an on an initial ascent backpack go ahead and check out the the podcast we did with joe uh elliston and uh dennis stokes yep. who are the owners of uh, initial ascent packs we broke. We we talked. We went into some detail on the pack and why we like it. Why I recommend it. It's an excellent pack. Go check it out. That might help you make a more informed purchase. And uh, for those that have bought the shirt and shopped at Initial Ascent and shopped at Peaks during this uh, two week giveaway, yes. we can't thank you enough. the The support has been amazing. And lastly, we do have a couple additional bear videos for you yep. that no one has ever seen except for on our gritty stealthy locals community so if you go to gritty.locals.com and you join that com community you can see there's a 30 minute or 40 minute video out there right now yep. of, of ryan lampers and his daughter tana in a serious backcountry hunt even though she's tiny yeah uh, on llamas and um they're tra traversing through the mountains and uh, this one that dropped today over at locals that movie is 40 minutes long yeah so there's some good bear content over there. Plus, there's other bear films out there that on the on the locals 
community page that you may or may not have seen. And we're doing a big giveaway over there as well on Wednesday night on mm-hmm. April 12th. Yep. We are going to do another live stream. We just did one and it was amazing. Thank you to everyone who jumped on the live stream and we gave away 20 items to 20 people. It was yep. really fun. So we're doing the same thing this week. So if you join locals, you can catch those bonus bear films that are fresh and new, two of them with Tana and Lampers. You can also catch old bear films and bear films you may not have ever seen that are exclusive to that community as well. So join us over there if you want to. For the rest of you, thank you for supporting us here on YouTube. And if you left a comment last week, you are entered to win in a random selection. An e-scouting course from Mark Levesay. E-scouting course. Toolkits. Yep. Good thing we have Brad here. (laughs) So Mark Livesey, who you just saw on the film there, he has created some of the best e-scouting courses and digital classes on basically how to to find elk, but it's applicable to bear hunting. It's applicable to all hunting, and the classes are phenomenal. They're excellent. He's created toolkits, so they integrate with Google Earth and other mapping tools. It will blow your mind. It'll change your life. Mm -hmm. It really will. If you hunt out west give you some confidence in making hunt plans all you know where's your water where do you camp where all that stuff predetermined routes right now bear elevation no layers no depths river big one uh spring runoff depths things like that can all be pre-scouted before you ever hit the mountain so you're thoroughly prepared don't get lost yeah know uh where the slopes and the benches are where the green up is for bears uh where elks like to hang out all that stuff is on on there it's excellent stuff so who is our lucky winner now? We got, boom, it says Chris Collier. Great film. Looks like really tough conditions. Congrats, Ryan, on a great bear. Gets the juices pumping for the upcoming season. Yes. All, All right. right, man. Thank you, Chris. Okay, if you leave a comment on today's video, you will be entered to win a goat knife. Just leave a comment, like, and subscribe to this channel, and you will be entered to win that that uh, goat knife. We will not pick the winner, though, until we do our next film drop, which isn't until June. Yeah. So you're just going to have to wait. But still, please leave us a comment. It helps with us, helps us with our YouTube algorithms. Mm-hmm. We are in the middle of uh, moving our channel, like duplicating our channel, I yeah. should say, over on Rumble. So if you are into Rumble and you want to check that out, it's like a YouTube alternative. We're growing uh, our channel over there as well. Yep. So you can go and subscribe. All the same videos will be available over there that are over here. And uh, yeah, that's cool. All right. Should we get into the hunt? Am I yeah. leaving anything out? Did I forget something? No, I think we got it all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just, before we move on, I just want to say mm-hmm. um, how incredibly grateful I am to all of you that support us in the various ways that you do. Even those that uh, may not have the financial means to go and shop at some of our partner sites and help us out. Yep. Just watching, leaving kind comments, liking the video, that's just tremendous uh, help. And I just just want to say thank you. We're excited. We are heading out on our bear hunt. It's like our bear tour, I guess you could call it. (laughs) We got various guys. We're going to go and test some new gear out there. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to, and we got some really cool new gear. We're going to be out for four to six weeks, probably. We got hunts that span alaska to the western u.s across multiple states so it's going to be a lot of travel a lot of a lot of camera equipment getting lugged around and a lot of um batteries being used and memory cards and the same old thing but we're hoping that we can bring back from those trips some epic adventures and epic epic uh like wildlife encounters we see the craziest stuff when we're out there and uh when we get to bring that into the house and share it I mean, it's a, uh, what do you say? It's a, uh, comfort I can rest in. It's a, well, and it's inspiring because I mean, we just, the things that we get to see and then we get to in turn share them with you really does inspire people. And we see it all the time to really get out there and motivating, get out, have an adventure of your own. Yep. So hopefully we can do that, empower you too, to, uh, be a better bear hunter or a better backpacker, just a better man or woman than before. So, um, this hunt, I wasn't there. And the last video that dropped last Sunday, I I got a lot of credit for that <laughs> film, but I in fact didn't film it. And Brad, filmed, I got a lot of credit too. Brad got I a also... lot of credit. He probably filmed ten percent of that movie. Yeah. I'm not sure. Kyam is the heavy lifter on that. Yep. Kyam Lloyd. So we want to give Kyam his flowers. Make sure that you know that 
Kayim, uh, Kayim was really the one. To, that teaser he made was really cool. Super talented guy. Yeah. And he is also the one who created the two films that are out on the Gritty Stealthy community right now that are brand new drops. So very talented. Uh, we just did a podcast with Kayim. And uh, ironically, this was his first hunt. It was like, his very first, first like, backcountry ser- expedition hunt. Yeah, and he was totally unprepared. And we threw him under the bus on a couple of podcasts. <laughs> then he came on and did a podcast with us a day or two later. Uh, yeah. where he semi defended himself, but really it was just, he's just tough as hell. And, yes. um, the podcasts are great. You don't want to miss those. Go check them out. But on this show, Hunter McWaters, same thing. I mean, he's a Virginia flatlander and here he is with Mark Livesey doing it, doing the hard things. Yeah. And, uh, where, where Brad and Kyam and Lampers ditched Mark Hunter stayed behind <laughs> And uh, the two of them got it done on this beautiful blonde bear. Yeah. So th- the, the the terrain speaks for itself. I mean, it's straight up, straight Steep, down. It's nasty. There's nobody back there in some of these places we go because people aren't equipped physically. Yep. But I got to say, looking at Mark, you know, the way he's breathing. It, Mark he, blows me away, honestly. Like, Okay, he's an 11 time, I think, I think it's 11, maybe 12 time Ironman competitor. Yeah. It like goes the highest level. It goes to show that when you just spend time with Mark, that I mean, you'll never the mental toughness mm-hmm. is so much. It's important to have both physical fitness and mental toughness, but mental toughness will take you further in life than absolutely than, than anything your else. Your physical abilities, really, and cultivating mental toughness. I did a podcast with Mark and his wife Amy. Mm-hmm. Over the summer last year in in June, July, when I was at the Western Hunting Summit, because she's also a twelve time Ironman competitor. Yeah, I think she won. I want to say she won the world championship. They're amazing. (laughs) So I wanted to pick the brain of some of these people who did one hundred and forty mile races and stuff because you know that's a unique individual. So we did a podcast with them, and I, I the mental part, I asked them that question, and they shared on that podcast kind of their thoughts on it. It's a really good podcast. I'd recommend go back and check it out. Put the link in this video here, a little description, but that's a, that's an excellent podcast, but that mental toughness thing, you know, Mark's just tough. So yeah. he'll get to those places. He can grind it out. He knows uh, it's just pain and it'll pass. And to his credit, Hunter was step for step. He did the whole thing. Yeah. You can tell at the end that Hunter is relieved. They're both relieved. But there's a there's a there's something about being out in the mountains like that, in a place and to do that feat of physical activity, yeah. the mental game that's involved, it's a big deal. When you've got a lot of new, new areas of I think avenues that really, especially Hunter, he hadn't touched on much because before because mm-hmm. he's in a super steep terrain is one. Yeah, he's crossing in the raft too, which is he doesn't have much experience yep. with that, and then doesn't have much experience bear hunting yeah so this is all new for him as well and mark like i said you go back to mark is just tough as hell yeah he is and mark like right now i see mark this year he's already in better shape than he was last yeah, year yeah you know, for sure but, we're we're all in pretty dang good shape yeah. as uh, we know what the spring season takes mm-hmm. out of us we always want to be prepared for that yep so let's talk a little bit about the bear itself um the bear I shot this bear yep. years ago, and it's it's one of it's probably the smallest bear that I ever shot on this uh this skin right here behind Brad, this mm-hmm. beautiful colored uh, red blondish bear hide. Yep. We don't find colors like this where the bears are actually really big. It's usually black, brown, chocolate, red, even yep, cinnamon color. Cinnamon can be large, but the blondies. You know, the reddish blondes, they seem the to be like a tend to be a bit big at, at most. What, they, about the size that, of what Mark shot. Yeah. About yep. that big, which is a nice, mature medium. I'd say he's yeah. a medium yeah. for, a, for a high mountain bear. It, you know, the, a lot of these high mountain bears, they don't get massive compared to a coastal bear. Yeah. But, but yeah, I would say um, that that's been what we've seen. For my part, this is my favorite bear skin I own. And I own a lot. I don't know, 20, 20 something bear skins yeah. floating around the house in my kids' rooms, hanging over chairs like this downstairs on tables. And I, I got to say the, that, that, that color. color just pops. It just stands out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, this one's a little more reddish, orange, blonde. 
this one that Mark shot is a real blonde. It's almost toe clat where the, yeah. the where the legs are dark. Yep. And the upper is is uh blonder. Or they're blonde, blonde, almost a whitish kind of kind of like those toe clot grizzly bears mm-hmm. that you that you see. So a very cool bear. Um we don't see them very often, but so it's pretty much a unicorn. Yeah. It's pretty rare. We've seen a few. Uh and usually if we see them, we take them. They're not very they're just not very common. Yep. Uh if you're a bear hunter and you get out there and you're into the the coat I and you find a color phase like that. I'm for me, I'm definitely I'm definitely in it. And I don't care that it's not a giant. Yeah, and that's the thing we talk about even with mule deer and elk, whatever, and it's like what speaks to you, what mm-hmm. gets you excited. And for you, it's these blondes. For me, it's like a chocolatey kind of I mean cinnamon color bear. Like that's what I, I do I, love. I like the red ones as well. Yeah. Black, I just have so many black bears that and and I've you know, I'm they don't get me excited, yeah. although the size and the meat gets me excited. Yeah. But I'm I'm likely in areas to, you know, the the bear the black bear hide isn't as exciting. This other one that Brad is sitting on yep. is reddish brown. That's a crazy color too. And the textures are so different because this texture is like grizzly bear. Yeah. I mean, literally, you know, coarse, thick underneath. Yep. And this is like fine, Soft, silky, fuzzy almost. silky brown uh, mm-hmm. color. <laughs> and uh, it's a big, it was a big bear um, for the area we were in. But you can see it's like a reddish brown. Yep. It's a chocolate. Chocolatey color. With a white, white uh, V on his chest. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of what speaks to you. So just, just some food for thought, just, mm-hmm. just to kind of Maybe that helps you put some things in context. We always talk about judging bears. Check out our bear and film playlist. If you just go to mm-hmm. the Brian Call Gritty uh, YouTube page and you go to that landing page, you'll see a playlist there that's bear films, bear podcasts. If you click on that, it's all the podcasts we've done yep. about bear hunting. Our gear dumps in preparation for spring bear hunts or post bear yep. hunt. And the bear films. And the bear films. And there's lots of pop-ups and educational stuff in the films as well. A lot of tidbits that can help you prepare for the season. So yep. check that out. But in there, you know, we talk about some of these things in sizes and and uh, taking care of meat in the back country, things like that. Yep. Before we close out, I think we got to give Hunter and Mark a hard time about the rafts. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, that was a travesty. I mean, it was just an embarrassment, the rafting situation. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we noticed when I was editing the film, well, Hunter did the edit, but I did a few, I, I tweaked some of it. I did a little polishing on the film. Mm-hmm. And I, so I was messing around with it and I was looking at the river crossing. And uh, one thing with an alpaca raft it is a yeah. tiny little five pound um raft yeah and really thin wall flotation device is what it, i'd call it yeah <laughs> and there's not much between you the raft and the water no. like it's, it's just a it's a little skimpy boat yet they're remarkably tough for being mm-hmm. like five pounds but one of the tricks with an alpaca raft is to make sure it's fully aired up extra inflated. like super tight because yeah. any air that i mean it doesn't take much for it to to uh the difference between it being stuffed with air and then just a little bit not yeah. enough air it that becomes so taco. much less stable mm-hmm. and you can look at the video you can see how much it wants to taco for both mark and uh and for hunter, hunter yeah. both those those boats were nowhere near so aired I, up. i enough. think we do a quick breakdown of like what you need to do is when you blow it up with the air sac uh-huh then you we always put it in the water and then you make sure you blow it up with your mouth. And then as that cool water, you know, cools down the hot air, you blow it again. You keep yeah, just adding air. I just keep adding air. Mm-hmm. And when you put the boat in the water, let's say you pump it up on the shore and you put it in the water within a minute or two, the, the coolness like shrinks the air, mm-hmm. I guess. Yep. Um, and hot air expands, cool, cold, cold, the heat, the coolness, um, contract contracts. And so you'll, Pull, blow it up pretty tight, set it in the water. And if you just jump right in it and go across it, especially in those colder spring mm-hmm. temperatures, it will just shrink right down and yeah. it'll be, you need to add once it's floating on the water a bit, you know, you need to add yep. more air and more air. And in their defense, both those rafts probably had holes in them. In their defense, we, Ryan, <laughs> probably I, I remember specifically because they asked about using the rafts and all we said were, yep, they're hanging in that tree. <laughs> 
We didn't give him any ex- instructions. They've never done them before. Yeah. Never used them before. So No instructions. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so they figured it out. And uh, I noticed on the way back, when you look at the rafts, mm-hmm. when they float on their return trip, way more air is in the raft. So they probably figured out that uh, they needed to make sure it had more air in it. Yeah. Or, or the temp was just lower because it was lower, l- later in the day. But yeah, when you got that raft, you want to get it as airtight and filled as possible. Yeah. Now, sometimes they have a little bit of a slow leak. So you're like, okay, you're giving it your last few puffs. You jump in, you go across. Uh, it's easy for it to have like a little leak here and there. We just t- patch them up with Tyvek um, and yeah. Tyvek tape usually. I think that's kind of mm-hmm. our favorite patching. There's other things we've used though too. Yeah. Excellent rafts, by the way. We did a podcast with those guys. That should drop soon. If you're interested in a raft, that they have some on demand at Alpaca Rafts. Yep. So in inventory, because they usually have a two to four week uh, sh- uh, sh- lead time, lead time yep. to get your raft. So if you're planning on using one for spring, you can actually go on the site and buy one like today, as just long as they may s- not be like the color or something yeah, you want, but they just, got them in. It's, it's whatever's in inventory. Mm-hmm. So you can buy from that inventory on demand. They, they've kind of built up a stockpile. So all you last minute guys that want to grab something like that, you can do that. So yep. if you go to Alpaca Raft, use the code gritty, you're going to get a discount and you can buy that on demand. But if you got two, two to four weeks, two to three weeks before your hunt starts, you can custom build something yep. different if you want, get a few bells and whistles. But their standard offerings are just the same boats yeah. that we use. What we use. So yep. I definitely recommend that you have the cargo uh, fly. Would fly. Yep. Um, because you just, you need the shoving those baffles. You need to be full. able to shove those, all your stuff inside the boat. So it's waterproof and it stabilizes the boat because mm-hmm. they're so light. It's so one thing that Mark and Hunter did is they put their gear on the top deck, yep. which on a crossings like that, we all sometimes do, but where that was as rocky and kind of dangerous as it was, like as far as the, the water being a little mm-hmm. swift, it's a little shallow, Yeah, but it was swift. We would probably stuff our our yep. gear into the pontoons and our boots and just things we don't we just absolutely do not want to get wet. Yep. We put it in there, zip it up, then air it up, and then go across. That is just safer. You know, you'll have fewer mishaps. Rifle, everything can just go in below deck yep. inside the raft and then float across. So, if you're interested in a raft, we can't imagine hunting without them nowadays, especially mm-hmm. for spring bear in the mountains. No. Use the code GRITTY over at Alpaca Raft and uh, get yourself one right away. Okay, I think that's it for today. Um, you will not see a video next Sunday, but like I said, there is a lot of video over at the Gritty Stealthy community. If you want to go to gritty.locals.com, pay 7 bucks. You can do a one-time thing. You can sign up month to month for 7 bucks yep. or 77 bucks for 12 months for the whole year. Yep. And uh, jump on the live stream. Big giveaway there, but you can also catch the bonus films that are that are over there. A couple new bear hunts, and then for some of you, some badass bear hunts you've never seen before over there. Yep. Hope to see you there. If not, we'll see you when we get back from our bear season. We got some podcasts pre-recorded. Look for those. We'll be dropping those while we're gone. Thank you for supporting us. Stay gritty. Stay gritty.